So you want me to tell you what we do specifically? Yeah. Just, okay. We uh, blow up bombs. <laughs> I guess if that's... After 9-11, there was a push from the federal government for bomb squads to obtain robots. We use it about one to two times a month. It gives us, as officers, the ability to not approach something that we think may contain explosives. Yeah, so let's go to that video of authorities sending out uh, that robot to investigate the suspicious item. It appeared to be some sort of jacket, a member of the bomb squad moving in, and obviously all ends well. I mean, everyone's safe. There are 466 bomb squads in the United States that operate a robot like this. Here in Sacramento, the California Highway Patrol is showing me how their robot can perform missions controlled remotely by fiber optic cable or by wireless. This particular model has three cameras and a two-way radio, and an operator can remotely control it as it climbs stairs, opens doors, picks up and removes suspicious packages, and blows them up. How difficult is it to drive? At first, it's difficult to drive. We, we operate in a three-dimensional world. Right. The cameras are two-dimensional, yeah. so it takes time for the operator to get used to looking at the cameras. I just need to get it out of here. Yeah. It's always easy to get a robot in. It's hard to get it back out. Uh, the robot is a tool. Uh, it is not the main thing that we use on a daily basis. The robots, which cost about $200,000 each, are only sold to the military and law enforcement. Most U.S. bomb squads own an Andros, manufactured by one of the largest military contractors in the country, Northrop Grumman. I visited their headquarters in Clinton, Tennessee, where the Andros robots are built by hand, repaired, serviced, customized, and tested. Fire the hole! Fire the hole! Fire the hole! The products that we make and sell they're very proud of them because they do a good thing. They save people's lives. They were first built to handle radioactive materials at the Oak Ridge National Laboratory. By the 90s, they were being used for bomb disposal. And post 9-11, the company has broadened their lineup, adding more abilities and customizations. To that end, Northrop Grumman is making their robot bigger and stronger to handle what they see as evolving threats. Vehicle bombs are a threat uh, in the past, a robot could pick up nominally 100 pounds. Some of the newer robots can pick up close to 300 pounds. They've sold more than 2,000 of these robots, and with so many bomb squads in the United States owning one, they show up in the news almost every night. Back now from Dallas, where police ended the deadly siege in the city last night by using a robot with a bomb. Dallas police turned to overseas battlefield tactics to take out the gunmen. The Dallas incident is important because it was the first time that a robot was used to take the life of someone posing a danger to the public. Northrop Grumman doesn't comment on incidents involving its robots, but what they and those who operate them are very clear on is that this kind of robot is not getting the ability to think for itself anytime soon. You need that human element to decide what's safe, what's not, how do we do this, what are the ramifications if we take this route of action, what's going to happen? Uh, currently, with the current technologies in our robot, I just don't see it being automated to the point where you send it down range, it handles your package, and comes back and everybody's safe.